Welcome back to the channel, it's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and you all wanted a Bethesda game with less hand-holding, and Starfield definitely fits that description. Now, I've logged about 80 hours in the live game, and there are so many different secrets and discoveries to be made throughout your adventures. Here are 15-ish tips, tricks, and secrets I've run into, ranging from exploration to piloting, vendors to mining. And I've tried to vary it up for you, and there should be something here for everyone. Thanks again for all the epic levels of support you've consistently shown my Starfield uploads. In case you haven't yet done so, please hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Likes, comments, shares are greatly appreciated. Chapters are of course available for easy viewing and let's get this one rolling. The cutter mining tool is a versatile piece of mining equipment which can actually double as an offensive weapon, but it will occasionally struggle when attempting to mine some of the rarer and more dense resources. Just holding down the fire button will essentially hip fire the cutter, and for the hardest of resources, it will take forever to break them apart for gathering, if at all. To fix this, hold down the aim button, and you'll see the three-pronged cutter aiming reticle gradually narrow with these three red bars as it narrows the beams into a tighter spread. Once they have touched the center of the reticle, press the fire button and you'll be able to easily break apart whatever element you are aiming to mine. Asteroids are spread across the systems in Starfield and can be an outright nuisance when attempting to dogfight enemy ships, but asteroids have a secondary feature as well in that they are floating resource caches. The next time you run into an asteroid field, light them up with your ship's weapons and you'll see resources pop out of the now destroyed asteroids just right for the plunder. Lock onto the floating caches and move your ship within 500 meters to activate the loot function. I've run into everything here from water and iron to more rare elements as well. Everyone is super into customizing their ships and getting the paint job applied can be time consuming. Highlighting each individual component, pressing the color key, picking the color and confirming for each component, but there is a much easier way to get the job done. Enter the ship builder tab and double click any module on the ship. And if you've done this correctly, the entire ship should turn reddish in color, meaning you've now selected the entire ship. Now just press the color key. For me on PC, that is J. Select the color you want. I personally love monochromatic black with no brightness for that ultimate snake eyes ninja look. And all that's left is to press accept and confirm the modifications. Ship combat can be super fun, especially in the larger scale battles, and having enough ship parts on hand for repairs is absolutely crucial to staying in the battle. Not every destroyed ship will drop these into space upon being torn to pieces, and getting caught without ship parts for your in-battle repairs can easily spell annihilation, especially when you get later in the game and you run into these random legendary ship battles. Now luckily, some vendors do sell ship parts in batches of five or six, and I found them both at the Jemison Mercantile and UC Distribution Center, as well as many more. But oddly, the ship engineer and his kiosk do not show them for sale. Now, a little trick here is not to look at the selling vendor's resource offerings, but instead take a peek under the aid selections, and if you find them, snatch them up but they are quite heavy at 10 mass a piece. And if you hit a couple of vendors, you will quickly become over encumbered, but at only 882 credits per ship part, they are a bargain for any would be space pirate. And while we're on the topic of ship parts, they will only show as available to use in combat if you transfer them from your character stash over to your ship's hold. Now to do this, enter your ship, go to the bridge, and you're going to see a safe looking panel that will highlight with the cargo hold tab. Interact with it and transfer all your character's ship parts over to your cargo hold. Trust me, I've made this mistake and been blown to bits when I tried to activate a crucial heal using ship parts, only to have them on my character instead of my ship. 
Grav jumping is used to travel large distances between systems and also to get out of a fight that we just don't have the odds on our side, but it can also be used to avoid scans in settled systems. Now, throughout your explorations, you're going to run into highly valuable contraband that if sold will net you some serious credits. But if you enter a settled system and don't have a shielded compartment on your ship capable of lowering the chances of detection, you will get nabbed by the authorities, brought down to the planet, and can usually get off with paying a fine and having the contraband seized. This is where having a ship with a lot of energy invested into the grav drive stat can save your bacon. If you enter a settled system knowing you have contraband on board, as soon as you hear that standard speech of hold while we scan you, dial up your grav drive to a new system and punch it. If you're fast enough, you will fold space before that scan can occur, keeping you in possession of the contraband and out of jail. Leveling up your piloting skills will allow you to pilot higher level spacecraft and involves netting a certain number of enemy kills before a new rank is achieved. And New Jemison at the Mast Academy is a pilot simulator that you can go to at any time and use it to level up your weapon system skills, piloting, targeting, and more, all without the wear and tear on your own ship and usually against lower level targets. You can enter as many times as you want, go through a few rounds of the simulation, and if you've got the skill points saved up, should be able to rank up your tech wing piloting skills fairly quickly. You can alter your character's appearance and name by entering the Enhance Shop, and this specific one is located in the commercial district of New Atlantis. For the low price of just 500 credits, you can completely redo the way your character looks and even change their name. Now, I'll include a link to a Reddit list of all the names Vasco will say if you use them. For example, now he calls me Captain Buzz instead of just Captain because he did not initially recognize my first chosen name. Lean shooting is available, but it's not consistent and can keep you shielded from incoming rounds while giving you a bit of an angle on advancing targets. To do this, enter first person mode and edge up to an opening, like an open hatch on either side, and then all you need to do is aim down the sights. If you're close enough to the hatch frame, your character will lean over towards the opening, exposing only a portion of your body. This also works with certain ledge cover, and as far as I can tell, only works in first person view. Once planet side, scanning all the different flora, fauna, and elements can get a bit overwhelming, but that's because many players are completely reliant on the use of the scanner. Now the next three tips are for cataloging and scanning these planetary items as efficiently as possible. And first up, for plants, you don't even need to use the scanner, just approach a plant and harvest it. This will take in whatever resources from the plants and scan them as well. Do this enough times and you will reach 100% on a select item. For animals, if you kill them, this will count towards a percentage of your scanning proficiency and could net you some rare materials. And for elemental resources, if you mine them, they will not only be added to your inventory, they will be scanned as well. And all of this without going back and forth with the scanner, which can actually be dangerous around hostile beasts as you run within feet of them trying to scan them. And here's a bonus tip for you about the scanner. If you equip it and point at unidentified landmarks, press scan, for me on PC that's E, and the scanner will show you what is waiting at that landmark, giving you more information as to which landmarks to travel to. Having enough credits to afford nicer and more dangerous toys is always going to be a struggle, but accepting contracts from the mission boards and the UC Vanguard can net you some major credits very quickly. Now these kill contracts will require you to travel to another system, take on a foe or group of enemies in a space battle, and will award you credits immediately upon the confirmed kill of your target. But there is so much more money to be made here. Incapacitating an enemy ship can be achieved by entering targeting mode and selecting their engines. For me on PC, that involves a quick push of the A key to move the targeting from the shields over to the engines. Now once they are disabled, get within 500 meters and board that enemy ship. Dispatch the enemy fighters and loot them, loot the captain's locker, loot the cargo hold, and especially be on the lookout for contraband. And here's another tip. Don't just leave this enemy ship behind, but instead take command of it by entering the captain's chair because the entire ship is worth credits as well. 
Next, you'll need a place to offload that valuable contraband and visiting the Den space station and the Wolf system just northeast of Jemison is the ideal spot, although there are others that will work as well. See the Trade Authority representative to offload the contraband all without scans and then go back to the commandeered enemy ship and fly it down to New Atlantis and land at the starport. Speak with the ship engineer, and here is where you will need to register the ship because if you don't take this step, you cannot modify the ship or sell it. Now, I've landed some seriously strong ships by using this method and then registering them, officially making them mine. But here's the catch nobody's told you about. The registration fee is approximately 84% of what the ship is valued at. On Class C ships, that can be a ton of credits, but... Think about this, you nab the ship for free, paying 84% of the value to make it yours is good value, or maybe you decide to sell it, pocketing a 16% profit. Either way, you come out on top. In the future, I plan on making more of these style of Starfield videos, and leave me some feedback as to what you'd like to see in future uploads. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Likes, comments, shares are greatly appreciated. All my socials can be found in the video description. Shout out to the now over 151,000 of you that have taken the leap and stuck with me. And a huge thanks to my patrons and to those of you firing over those awesome YouTube super chats. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.